Good afternoon. Welcome to Durfee High School's Mac Aldridge Field. More girls soccer on tap here on Fred TV as the Lady Whalers from New Bedford make the trip to Durfee to square off against the Lady Hilltoppers. Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. Welcome to the broadcast. It's our second straight game with Durfee girls soccer. Last week we saw Brockton against Durfee, and it was a really frustrating game uh, with some tension boiling over in the second half. Uh, a lot of physicality from Brockton, and the Hilltoppers were pretty unhappy um, with how things turned out last week. Created a lot of chances on offense, but really just couldn't finish, and that's something that Coach Ami Lauren Roach is hoping uh, the Hilltoppers can do a little better today. Um, in fact, their matchup against New Bedford just uh, about maybe two or three weeks ago, it was September 19th. That was Durfee's only win on the season. It, it was a 2-1 to one victory on the road. So they're coming in at 1-9. and nine. New Bedford, not much different. They're coming in at 1-8. and eight. So it's been a really tough go of it for Coach Andrea Nogueras Whalers here in 2019. And, and a lot of the reason why, they're in a similar situation as the Hilltoppers. Uh, they're a young team. They have 13 underclassmen, only five upperclassmen. So, you know, very similar to Durfee in the sense that it's a young team and they're really in a bit of a rebuilding year um, this season. So we'll see what we get here today. Again, that first matchup was a close one, a 2-1 to one victory. You know, anytime it's a one-goal differential, it's basically anybody's game. So uh, that's a close, close one. Um, and uh, we'll hope to see the Lady Hilltoppers with a win as they get close to wrapping up the home schedule here just a couple games left after today um, on the home calendar for the Lady Hilltoppers. So, four o'clock start here at Mac Aldridge Field as we are underway. This one moved up initially, slated for a night game, but uh, moved up to the four o'clock game, which is fine with us. And the Hilltoppers going to get a corner kick here, literally 30 seconds into the game. Sent in the air. And kicked away. Um, unlike in most, you know, home team situations, the team in the lighter jersey is actually the away team here. So uh, New Bedford in the white and Durfee wearing the black. So uh, just for you at home wondering who's who, Durfee wearing the black uniforms, black jerseys, and New Bedford in all white. I kind of miss the red. I have to be honest. I miss the red. I mean, the... the this is easy to read. <laughs> Trust me, this is easy to read. I have to say, Diamond, um, you're actually going to get some bonus coverage here at halftime. We'll tease that right now. Uh, we have a few highlights from Diamond Regional as the Bengals, who um, are really looking very strong halfway through the year, squared off against the Conley Cougars. So an inner city battle that went on yesterday, or on Monday, rather, uh, this week. So we, we have some bonus highlights for you from Diamond, and, and Diamond has new new uniforms. They're pretty awesome actually. You know, the Bengals wear black and orange and these are um, really modern looking jerseys. We, we were kind of admiring them from the sidelines yesterday. So they look pretty cool. They used to wear all white with the orange letters and now they're, they're black out with um, orange kind of, an orange pattern that fades from shoulder to like torso. So it's really wild looking jerseys for the Bengals. So you'll get to see those at halftime. Hilltopper is going to get themselves yet another corner kick. Creating chances early. And it's scooped in the air by Avery Roderick, the goalie for New Bedford. And while she kicks it away, we'll run down your starters. For the Lady Whalers, number two, Destiny Missay. Number three, Kim Sinabra. Number seven, Vanessa Busha. Number eight, Sage Morrow. Number 11, a captain, Sam Panacho. Number 12, Zoe Rosa. Number 13, Calista Pacheco. Number 14, Haven Lopes. Number 16, Tari Pereira. Number 18, Jenna Noguera. And in goal, number one, Avery Roderick. For the Hilltoppers, number two, Destiny Alvario. Number four, a captain, Marissa Deleuze. Number five, Abigail Long. Number nine, Emma Tipitot. 
Number 11, Amelia Dias. Number 12, Nor Issa. Number 13, Charlotte Miserato. Number 15, Zoe Sylvester. Number 16, Kyla Lockhart. And number 17, a captain, Catherine Callahan. The third captain for the Lady Hilltoppers, unfortunately out with an injury at the moment, is number 10, Samantha Soares. And Coach Roach is hoping that she will be back sooner than later. In goal today for the Hilltoppers. As that one is sent back toward the corner on the third corner kick of the game here in just four minutes' time. In goal is Haley Silva for Durfee wearing number 24. And I believe we had an offsides right there, so... They'll look to Roderick to kick it away. A little breezy here today at game time. Cloudy. Unfortunately, it's going to be like this the rest of the week. Not going to be too pleasant. Uh, just 60 degrees. Again, a slight breeze coming in from the north. But we will stay dry, unlike last week. We will stay dry throughout this game before the rain comes for the rest of the week, basically. Good news is we won't be outside the rest of the week. Uh, the only other game we have on tap here on Fred TV will be Thursday as we'll get to see the Lady Bengals volleyball team for the first time this season. But uh, no football here in the city. Diamond is... Um, on the road, and uh, the Hilltoppers have a bye before they head to Brockton next week in what should be a very tough game. Brockton is always tough. Hilltoppers had a real tough one last Friday. It's, uh, it's an opportunity, a foot race to the ball, and they'll kick it back to Roderick. And the Hilltoppers in Dartmouth, it was almost deja vu from last year. I mean, really let, let one slip away again to the Indians. It was really almost a carbon copy, a very frustrating loss for Durfee, a game that they should have had. Um, Dartmouth had not won a game this season. They were getting outscored. If I recall, the lopsided number was like 88 to 47 or 40, something like that. It was they doubled up basically in every game. Um, so it was a game Durfee should have had and a couple key mistakes, ultimately what cost them the W that you know, they really should have had in the bag. So tough one for the football team. They're down to two and three now. First time below 500 on the season with uh, Brockton next week and Barnstable in the regular season finale. So two very tough matchups coming up for Durfee, both on the road. Um, so we wish the boys good luck. We, we think we'll see them one more time in November. That's usually the case uh, so that we can have senior night. Chance for Durfee again. That one going into the corner, and it's going to go out of play. Miss Dorado just could not get there quick enough. And it appears it will be a goal kick. No, excuse me, a corner kick. I was going to say, you know, I saw, I saw Roderick coming back, and for some reason I thought that she had, like, the ball under her arm or something. I don't know. But I, I didn't think it went out off of Durfee. So Durfee with their fourth corner kick in the first 10 minutes. Ball loose in front. It will go out behind the net. And now this will be a goal kick as everybody retreats. Hard to believe that we're already into October and more than halfway through the fall season. It's just absolutely amazing how fast time goes here. Before you know it, it'll be Thanksgiving. <laughs> Whalers trying to move the ball up the field. That is something that Coach Nogueira said they are getting better at doing, and that's the captain, Panacho, working the sideline, passing it back to Busha, who has to stop and spin around. Unable to clear it was Deleuze, and now is centering pass is headed out by Tipitot and the Whalers will get themselves a corner kick Mommy. 
Tari Pereira will do the honors. Sent towards the net, headed out of the box and toward the sideline. Good takeaway from Miss Dorado, trying to set it up here, finding Lockhart in stride, but she's cut off and it's sent to the sidelines and out of play. So a quick uh, correction here, by the way, on the jerseys. Last game, we had Tipitat and Deleuze swapped. Well, they had swapped jerseys. Apparently, they're playing head games with us because they've gone back to their original numbers. Wait till I see coach. <laughs> Good heads up from our camera cameraman, Nathan Saucier. So my correction in the beginning when I said the starting lineups. So number four is indeed Tipitat. Number nine, Deleuze. Kill me now. All right. <laughs> Throw in for the Whalers. It's tapped out of bounds by, uh, I believe, Deleuze. And we'll see another throw in here for New Beige. Sub coming in for Durfee as uh, Noguera checks in for Nor Issa. So Catherine Noguera getting her first minutes of play here. Already 10 minutes into the game. You have to think whoever scores first. Oh, an errant pass there. It just missed. So you have to think whoever scores first in this one you know, will have a major advantage just due really to the lack of scoring. Now again, uh, looking back to last Thursday, Hilltoppers did net one goal. It was actually on a free kick uh, from Dias. But uh, unfortunately, despite a lot of opportunities that they created, they got down the field and just couldn't finish it off. Couldn't really seal the deal. So um, it's it's good when you can create opportunities because the more opportunities you create, the more chances you get, sooner or later they're going to go in. And that was something that I did talk about last week. Now we've seen the Hilltoppers with a number of corner kicks here. Play has, for the most part, been on this right side of the field. So New Bedford's had to play a lot of defenses. Uh, Boucher gets herself a little bit of a surge here. That one redirected and handled easily, though, by Silva. You know, if I'm Durfee, I really want to try to set something up. Try to get one early here. You know, not necessarily, you know, look to your teammates, get some help pushing up the field. You know, when you've got just one person moving up and doing all the work against three defenders that usually doesn't pan out pretty well. So you're looking for some help if you're a forward. You know, you want to get a couple other players up there with you uh, as Long is going to toss in now to Lockhart. Mr. Otto called on the offside.
Shot on net. Oh, Silva. Tough hop and a play in front. What a block by Silva. Third chance effort, and it goes through the uprights. All the Whalers. You can't make too many more chances like that. Wow, three times. And on that third time, too much on the kick. It goes out of play, but Silva with a great save for the Hilltoppers. Unfortunately, she kind of almost made it a little harder than it needed to be because she played it off the foot, and that's what kind of created that opportunity. But in the end, a really good save, or a tough offsides call there as uh, the defense dropped back, and Matos got caught out of position. Definitely unintentional. She really wasn't even surging up the field, just was kind of standing still when the ball came to her. That one sent towards the box. And a little more routinely played by Silva. Down the field goes Matos, but right on her tail feathers is Rosa. Matos gonna get a shot off, and it's handled in the air by Roderick. Well played. And a really strong punt right there. Landing across midfield. She came pretty far out too. Almost, almost came out of the box actually with that punt. Oh, another chance. Who's going to get there first? And it'll get to Roderick. Another ball sent down toward the box. New Bedford just kicks it out on the side. That was uh, Miss A choosing to force Durfee to kick it in rather than, or rather throw it in rather than try and spin around with pressure coming. Along with the throw in, that was a little weird. We heard the official with a whistle, so she kind of stopped. And then he gave her the thumbs up, and she was already at the line. So didn't get as much on that throw as I think she would have liked to, but she'll get another shot at it here. That time almost flat-footed. Coming out again, and we'll go for a third time. Three for three here. Here we go. That one bouncing. Dias can't make a play. That one's sent towards the corner and just wide to the left. It goes. Roderick having a quick Discussion with our official before the goal kick. Line drive kick and, oh, Dias came in trying to cut it off and it skipped past her. If she had, she had a lot of open field. Nice pass through the legs and she'll get it right back. Looks like Callahan may have taken one, may have taken it up into the face. And we got an injury timeout here. Coach Roach out there on the field. And our trainer, Kelly Mahoney, making her way over. 
Callahan going to come out for a few, and we'll see um, Deleuze back in there. And we'll see the drop ball, which is something we've seen more of. Yeah, this is exactly kind of what happened in the Brockton game. You know, that was another great set, and it's like the ball's getting sent up the field just a little bit too hard and a little too quickly before the forwards can get there, and they're not able to beat out the goalie to the ball. And it's kind of stymieing some opportunities for Durfee. Again, you know, you're getting the ball up the field. That's fantastic, but now you've got to figure out a way to control it up the field and, you know, get the shot off. That's really the bottom line. Hilltoppers just had another free kick. Played by Tipita off the head. Missay also off the head. And offsides. There goes Matos. Had a shot on net just a little while ago. And that one kicked out by Sinabra, who came roaring, rearing in really quickly. And another corner kick for the Hilltoppers as we come up on the halfway mark here in the first half. Evan Massoud with you on Fred TV. Girls soccer, Southeast Conference play, Durfee and New Bedford. Wow, they're calling that a throw-in. I thought that that went out on the goal line. And nonetheless, goes out once again, and now we'll have a goal kick. Matos in position, and she can't get there quick enough. Once again, just one stride too short. That was set up perfectly. It was played in the air. Callahan back in there as she tried to play that one off the head. Matos. I'll tell you, Missay doing a great job at defending, and it looks like she's going to draw the call. Those two have had the feet intertwined, basically. Throughout this first half. And it will be Dias kicking it off. A little further out from the corner. So this is actually a, a, a really good spot because uh, you can really make some things happen. You got some girls in front as well. Lofting it off the head of one of the whalers. And it's going to go... Out of play, I think it will be a corner kick. I think the Whalers are the only ones that touched it. Yeah, indeed, it will be a corner kick. A late arriving crowd here at Mac Aldridge Field, but now we got some fans in the stands. Did the uh, 
starting lineups, and I'm not sure that anybody had even gotten here yet, to be honest with you. So this is good. Ball is loose in front, and oh, what a clear, as uh, Roderick could not make the play. And I think that was Sanabra who saved the day for the Whalers. Yeah, it was Sanabra. Great job, great heads up clear for Kim Sanabra. And then the Whalers were able to transition, get it all the way back down the field on that save. Everybody was still all bunched up near the goal. Well, that probably should have been a whistle right there as uh, Miranda got kind of pushed down a bit, and I think the Hilltoppers might have gotten away with one. Good kick from Silva. It was looking like it was being sent towards Matos, but it was blocked by Rosa. And now on this near side, being played by Rodriguez, taken away by Long, and now to Matos. And Matos has some help. The feed is good, but Raposo unable to hold on to it. Yeah, Raposa had Sanabra right on her tail feathers as well. The, the, the front line defense here for New Bedford is pretty quick to the ball which has really helped them. Collision at midfield, Callahan goes down. She's had a rough first half. Rodriguez on this near side, Hilltoppers chasing her down. She's gonna have some help in front, gets by Noguera. Oh, wow, that was close. And it'll be a corner kick for New Bedford. Not going to the air, trying a little trickery, and it does not pan out at all for New Bedford. Fed up ahead, but Sanabra playing back. The second defender, kind of a safety defender in a way. Making sure nobody got by the line. Alva Rio with a great trip up that sideline. Getting all the way down. And she forced a corner kick. Durfee's had a half dozen of these in this first half. Most of them coming in the first five minutes. <laughs> and Dias is just going to stand pat in the corner. She's going to get another one right here. Some of the more underappreciated volunteers here at a soccer match is the ball retriever. So that one played in the air by Roderick. But I'll tell you, the ball retrievers always get a workout because they're running around the whole game. Now we actually have an um, unusually high number of soccer balls around the perimeter, um, more than usual more than the norm. I'm seeing quite a few all the way around the uh, the track here to make it probably a little easier, but nonetheless, it's a busy job. Another chance for New Bedford, and Silva bats it away. Loose ball in front, and another chance. Oh, and it's off the hands, and that saved it.
Silva took one away. A huge save for Haley Silva to force the corner kick and keep this one scoreless with 12.20 to play. Wow, she didn't put those hands up. That one was right in the back of the net. Going to go on the ground again. And it does not work for New Bedford again. I'm surprised. They, that's the more unconventional thing, but we're seeing more and more teams do it. We heard a whistle, so play is halted. Um, it's really the unconventional way for a corner kick. But again, as I was about to say, more and more teams seem to be doing it, I think, just to try to fool the opponent. But that's twice now we've seen the Whalers try it and not execute it. So we we'll wonder if they'll keep it up or not. Or we'll maybe see a more conventional one. That one lofted out off the toes of Long. Not a clean kick. And New Bedford is going to get to throw in Missay on the throw. Still in front. A lot of Whalers in the box. Alvarillo can't clear it. Boucher sends it towards the net. Silva able to play it on the hop after stopping it with the hands. And she sends it away towards Long. It's a little bit of a late surge here for the Whalers. Most of the action has really been with Durfee on the offensive attack. That one kicked out by Emily Rodericks. As we roll up on the 10 minute marker here in the first half. Should have been a pretty quick first half, to be honest with you. It's weird, it's always 40 minutes, but sometimes it just feels, sometimes it'll feel longer than it is, sometimes it feels shorter than it is. It's <laughs> I guess it depends on the action on the field, and we've, we've seen uh, some good play here. We haven't seen players get bunched up too much. You know, there's been a lot of separation back and forth down the field. Again, you know, Durfee's had some chances down this right side. New Bedford now late here in the first half with some chances. Another throw in from Missay. Talk about separation. The Whalers not able to get that from the defense right now, but a chance for Busha. Busha with a set to Panacho, the captain, and she's cut off, and it will not be a shot taken as Alvarillo gets by and now some room to move the Hilltoppers with a three on two advantage here moving up the field and Sanabra uh, gets in the way clears it out to kind of halt the progression here and we'll see Miss Dorado and Lockhart coming back into the game Now the Hilltoppers will throw in there on the far side. It goes right to Lockhart. Be met by Sanabra in the corner. Kicking it backwards now. Shot taken in and it's scooped on the bounce. Ranging play there from Roderick. And she kicks it away quickly. Landry Karen trying to send it up the field. That one off the toes. Karen again settles it. Callista Pacheco couldn't clear it out down the field. Free kick for New Bedford coming. Good, strong kick over the line toward the box. Silva plays it on a hop. 
she'll send it away. Toward the sidelines, it given chase by Rodriguez. Goes out, New Bedford with the throw in. Tipitot unable to control it before it goes out of play. Back toward the box, Rodriguez. Karen, she spins it around. Sends it towards Dias. And out of play it goes. This time, Durfee ball. Taken away by Tipitat. Dias trying to get through the defense here, and she sends it up the field. And Alvario, a speedy freshman. Given chase, but it goes out of play. Driffy will throw in, not before we see Deleuze come back into the game. That one will roll out of play. Lockhart stops the kick and now has it taken away from her. Callahan toward the corner and that's going to roll out as uh, Abigail Long kind of pulls up on it. And it'll be another goal kick. Looking at just five minutes left here in the first half. toward the sideline and that's going to find its way out. And Durfee will throw in again. Right there, another good example of what New Bedford's been able to do defensively. They, they're getting on the inside, forcing Durfee outside and they're not letting him cut back in, which is a big reason why we're scoreless right now because Durfee has not been able to get many shots. Even though they're getting down the field, they're not able to get it toward the net. Another low kick from Roderick. That one out of play. Wheelers team. Yeah, that's got to be frustrating when you can take you take it all the way down the sideline yourself, and then it ends up going out. So you worked all that way on your own, and then it's going to be thrown in by the other team. That one lofted toward midfield, off the head of Rosa. Whalers again down toward the box here, trying to make some noise. We near the end of the first half. That's out of play. Missay will throw in for New Bedford. Ooh, right off the chest of Missay from the foot of Miss Dorado. And it'll be a Durfee throw in. And now back the other way. <laughs> see, Miss A has a really strong throw in, which is obviously why you see her doing 
the bulk of it. She gets some good distance on the ball. She's not the tallest player out there. She's got good arms, though, quick wrists, able to kind of snap the ball up in the air, and it goes a good distance. Long, forging ahead, but she loses it. And that will go out of play on the goal line, and Hilltoppers should have a corner kick out of this with two minutes to play. Kick from Dias, a high kick, swatted away by Roderick, who really went up the ladder for it. Played by Morrow. On the ground, sending it to Boucher. Dias with the little chip shot. You know, she's done that a couple times. She, again, she's really given her teammates, she's given her forwards a chance at the ball. She's really done a good job of setting them up. Just not getting there. Redirected toward Pereira. As Karen hit the turf. Pass back to Morrow. Now Missay down to the box. And cleared out. And the whistle signifies the end of the first half here. Almost a real time first half. We did start a couple ticks before four o'clock here. The officials were ready to rock and roll. But uh, a pretty quick first half here, not really any stoppage, so it moved along. We're scoreless here after 40 minutes at Mac Aldridge Field. And uh, as I said early in this game that uh, we had some bonus Highlights for you from Diamond Regional of boys soccer. The Bengals um, have started out this season at 7-0-2. They have no losses through the first nine games. A really impressive start to the season. They hosted their Fall River rivals, the Bishop Conley Cougars, um, on Monday afternoon. And we have some highlights of that one. So let's take a look at those right now. Despite all the wind, it was a beautiful day over at Diamond Regional. You see head coach Manny Batello watching his Bengals warm up pregame. First minute of the game, Bengals on the attack early. Aiden Codero and Colin Pereira up the field. The shot from Pereira is deflected. Lucky bounce goes to Cody Arruda, and he buries it in the corner. It's 1-0 Bengals less than 60 seconds into the match. An impressive start. The Cougars had very few opportunities on offense. This was one of their best breaks, but Kevin Lopes spoils Luca Ferrara's bid to tie the game up. Goalie Daniel Reese appreciates the effort from Lopes. Good stuff there defensively for Diamond. Now just under 10 minutes to play in the first half. Aiden Cordero working up the sideline. He cuts in, schools not one, but two Cougars defenders and sets up his teammate for the second goal of the afternoon. That's selfless soccer right there, folks. Impressive. Diamond went on a tear after our cameras had left in the second half. They shut out Conley with the big 8-0 shutout at home. Hi, my name is Laura Ferreira. I am the director of traffic and parking for the city of Fall River. As the school year begins, we want to remind everyone of the school zone safety laws. Crosswalks are here for a reason, your safety. Please use them. Always wait for a crossing guard to stop traffic and escort you safely. 
Drivers, please use caution when entering a school zone. 20 mile per hour speed limits are strictly enforced as mandated by state law. By being respectful and patient with one another, we can all arrive at our destination on time and in one piece. Thank you for your attention. If you have concerns or questions, please contact my office at 508-324-2123. Let's have a wonderful school year. Welcome back to Matt Galdridge Field. We got ourselves a scoreless ball game, girls soccer, conference play, Durfee and New Bedford. And uh, again, no no goals in that first half. Couple good opportunities for both teams, but unable to break the ice. Um, and as you saw right before the quick break, that we had uh, some those highlights from Diamond, and really it was a that was a big game. You know, most of those goals they are coming in that second half after our cameras had left. Um, but Diamond continues to really be the class of their conference. 8-0-2 oh, with that win. Uh, so really impressive for the Bengals here in 2019. As we get ready to start the second half, want to remind you all, we promoted this last week and we're going to continue to do so here uh, over the next week. Fred TV is hosting a school committee debate, which will be on October 16th, so one week from Wednesday. Basically one week away. It will be at Cuss Middle School from 6.30 to 8 p.m. We will have it live on Fred TV and on FredTV.us if you want to stream it on the web. So Channel 9, Fred TV, and on the web. And it will also be simulcast on our sister station, FRG TV, Channel 18, as well as on the web there, FRGTV.us. And uh, so we're really looking forward to it. Questions will be asked by... Um, actually, they've been developed by and will be asked by the uh, students of Durfee High School. We have three students representing Durfee, different capacities. Um, so we're really excited that we were able to team up with some of the student groups here and um, have three representatives of the high school. We figured that would be fitting considering we're talking about the leaders of the district, basically, the ones representing the school department. A chance here, Dias. Takes the shot. Oh, it's grabbed out of the air by Roderick. What a snag. That's I'd say that's her best save of the night. That was a tough one to make. Um, so, yep, getting back to the debate, though, we're really looking forward to it. As always, Fred TV has been your official home for all school committees, all school committee meetings, and anything educational here in the city, including sports programming. And the same can be said for GTV since we launched it back uh, almost 10 years ago now, which is it's amazing how fast time has flied. You know, the government channel is your official city station for anything city-related in terms of meetings and press co press events, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a unique setup here with the educational and government channel. And... Um, we are your official educational government channels here in Fall River on Comcast. So um, we're proud to be able to bring you that on the home for all things educational, Fred TV. And, of course, I um, want to mention, too, if you want to be there, we'd love to have a full auditorium at Cuss. The debate is open to the public, so um, you're welcome to go to Cuss if you want a night out and want to hear what the candidates have to say rather than watching it on TV, please come out to Cuss Middle School down in the south end there off of Bay Street. That one's going to sneak out on the goal line and it'll set up New Bedford with a corner kick. So as we're about three minutes in, Evan Massoud with you for the broadcast. Again, we'll have one more game on Fred TV this week, and that'll be uh, girls volleyball. So we'll see the Lady Bengals. And uh, actually, as I said, it'll be their first, our first look at them this season. Ball loose in front. Hilltoppers will 
clear it out, goes toward the sideline and will bounce out of play. And Bedford with a quick throw in, not wasting any time. Lofted. And Silva has to jump up to reach the ball to make the stop. Well, that one punted away, but almost straight up and down. It doesn't get much distance on it. Only about a 20-yard kick. That one wide to the right. Alvarillo with a pass to Dias. Now Lockhart, but it bounces back the other direction off of her, and she's going to lose it. Taken away by Boucher. Rodriguez stops it in the corner. It's sent back in her direction, and it's sent out of play by Matos. Actually, I think that might have been uh, long. So hard to see the numbers that far away. Oh, no, that was number four. Excuse me, that was tip top Wheeler's going to throw in again. Foot race to the ball, and the Hilltoppers with a break. Shot on net and didn't get much on it. Another chance, and the Hilltoppers, oh, and falling on it is Roderick. It almost skipped by her. Two fantastic opportunities for Durfee, but again, they just can't get through. Waiting on a goal kick here for Durfee. Coming out is Roderick, and she kicks it away. It'll go right out of play on the sideline, right around midfield. Another ball out of play is can't seem to get off that sideline. And the 
the lights are on here at Durfee. Last week when the uh, football team was in Dartmouth, got to see the latest in lighting technology at a high school stadium, LED lights. And uh, now I didn't get to experience how bright they can get because that was a four o'clock game, so we didn't really get to play under pitch black skies. Um, but nonetheless, LED light stanchions. Um, and Gillette Stadium actually recently upgraded to that. And it, I'll tell you, it's pretty impressive that you can go from clusters of lights all atop, you know, the, um, the nosebleeds there at Gillette. Clusters like we have here on these light posts, uh, light poles here at Durfee as Dias makes a nice move and may have another shot on net. Off the toes and scoop by Roderick again. But it seems like for every, you know, maybe 12 to 15 lights, traditional lights, you end up with one LED. It's absolutely amazing. Um, Gillette went from having, I'm trying to think, I think it was maybe three rows, say similar to what we have here, clusters, maybe three by five, four by five, another chance for Durfee. And it's cleared away to literally one big light for one big LED for each of uh, those clusters of traditional lights and you know they don't give up they don't use as much energy you get instant light there's no warm up cool down none of that um and it's just as bright i'll tell you it's it's amazing um so that's that's the future here of lighting corner kick coming to the edge of the box here it's lofted straight up and bouncing out of it Taken and scooped by Roderick. That one rolls out. And the Whalers give it back to Durfee. Hilltoppers get to throw it in. Callahan sending it up ahead. Another chance for Durfee. How many times are we going to say that tonight? Over the head of Roderick and just wide to the right. My gosh. How many times? Sooner or later, one of these are going to go in, I'll tell you. No shortage of opportunities, that's for sure. And Roderick has been very busy over the last five minutes. <laughs> a lot of saves, a lot of kicks. Sent back towards the circle. Dias redirects it. Long with the pass up ahead, but I think this will be played by Roderick at will. Got to her too quick. She got a strong kick too. Wow, that one's gonna land past midfield, off the head, and another set, another chance for Durfee. Lockhart. Going to the sideline, can she keep it in? She does, nice job, good ball handling right there. That was a centering pass, and that's gonna be sent backward now. And that one skips through the hole and out of the box. But quickly there is Alvarillo.
Dias comes charging in. Alvarillo tripped up by Misse on the stretch. one out of play. Again, the far sideline. Just want to uh, clarify. Um, you know, I mentioned that this week we only have one other game on tap and that's uh, girls volleyball we do also have um, field hockey on the schedule but with the rain I don't think we're going to be able to cover that because um, we can't shoot from inside the press box like we're doing right now in the event of rain because the press box doesn't have windows that face the practice field so that's the only reason it wasn't mentioned um, it may be bonus coverage it's going to all kind of have to do with how the rain uh comes into the area on Wednesday and if we're not we're going to have uh, if we'll have a dry spell or not in that time frame so a little bit up in the air I'm, I'm hoping we can bring it to you but and that's offsides hoping we can bring it to you but um, if I'm being honest right now doesn't look likely but we'll keep our fingers crossed Sent away. Loose ball. Nobody wants it. Wow. Had just a couple girls going after it. Everybody else was just watching it roll. In the air it goes. Sky high. Landing in the circle. Spun around is Mr. Rado down the field for Lockhart. Do I dare say another chance for Durfee? And she's going to lose it. Oh, does it go in? No, oh, just wide to the left. Oh, my gosh. I didn't think she was going to get a shot off there. She had um, Rosa really roaring in behind her. Amazing, the number of chances here. I mean, it's, it's a great thing to see, but sooner or later you want to see a goal too, <laughs> you know? I mean, we see, it's a, it, it, and it's weird how it happens because there have been some teams that we've seen and, you know, they'll put up two goals and they're playing defense the whole game. Whereas you see Durfee here, they, they've been on offense for probably 70% of this one. And they don't have a goal to show for it. So that's got to be frustrating. Lockhart forging ahead again. Can she get a shot off again? Going to be deep in the corner. Centers it. She goes down, as does the defender. Have to see the number at the moment. But a little bit of a collision there at the goal line. And the play made by Roderick yet again. Oh, 
A very late whistle there for that foul. And that was almost a good three count after it had happened after Sam Panacho went down. So it's highly irregular. You have a delay like that, it makes you wonder if they're thinking about it. And usually if you have to think about it, then mm, we'll leave it at that. Panacho chasing it down in the corner. Sylvester meets her there and takes it away and it'll force the corner kick for the Whalers, who seem to have more fans here today than Durfee. <laughs> Seriously, there's a lot of uh, New Bedford fans here this afternoon who made the trip. Okay, we're coming up on the halfway mark of this second half. 20 minutes in the books, 20 minutes to go as Panacho sends the kick away. That's on the ground and it goes out. Sylvester with the key block in front of Silva, her goaltender. And Silva will kick it away. Uh, rather, nope, she's gonna give it to Sylvester to kick away on the far side of the box. a centering pass from Busha. Trying it again. Panacho there, so was, I believe that was Pereira. Oh, what a move from Panacho. Off the toes though, couldn't get a good footing on it, but tremendous move there in the corner to redirect and Try to create a little space for herself. Good pass to Matos, but Matos. Oh, she's still on her feet. Loose ball, the collision with Roderick, who basically created a wall and stood her up. And another save. Foul on Panacho. Wow, that was another great pass. Matos on the ground. Not a good set there. I wonder if she could sense the pressure of uh, Pacheco behind her. Because she had a little more room and really could have settled that one and taken a shot just a little bit closer. And uh, I'd say a bit of a missed opportunity there. Panacho down the field quickly and able to keep it inbounds. Shot on net. Silva with the play and the save. Raposa trying to get some space. It goes out of play. Durfee will throw.
Turfy wanted the foul on that one. Didn't get a call. That one, I think, bounced up and just hit Pereira in the hand. Another good pass. Oh, but she slowed up. Matto slowed up on it. Moro looking for Panacho. That went out of play. The Whalers will throw in. Another chance for Panacho. They've been really targeting her, the captain. That's a centering pass. And Silva going to let it go. It'll go out of play, and she'll get the kick. Just about 15 minutes to play here in the game. Evan Masood with you on Fred TV. Still scoreless. This one will come right down to the final 15 minutes here to determine whether uh, we'll have a winner or we'll end up in a stalemate. So we invite you to stick around for the conclusion of this one. Matos, a foot race to the ball. And Sinabra. Good move by Matos. Oh, she gets tripped up in the corner, and that draws the foul. I think Dias thought it was going to be a corner kick, but they're calling it, a again, the foul. So it's a free kick from maybe 10 feet in or so from the corner. Dias, good kick, lofting it, and it is sent out of play. And the Hilltoppers will get a corner out of it. Looked like it may have gone out off of Missay. Here, coach, uh, assistant coach, Hayden Tavares saying movement, movement. He wants movement out in front of the net. That's going to be right into the hands of Roderick. Not the best placement from Dias on that corner kick. Down the field it goes, but the Whalers will most certainly get to this one first. And another good kick from Roderick. She's really done a nice job clearing the ball out. That one kept in, passed down the side to Lockhart. Played on side and a great pass. Loses it. Deleuze. Bad pass. Morrow, though, sends it out. Kind of bails her out. The Whalers kick it out of play, and it'll be another throw in for the Hilltoppers. That's out again, and Durfee will throw in again. Sylvester. Dias toward the box. It gets by. Here's a chance. Oh, they're going to call the foul on Long. I 
Timeout New Bedford. It's the first timeout used in the match and it's 70 minutes in. So 11.18 to play while the teams take their timeout, so will we. Come back for the conclusion on Fred TV. Honor, courage, sacrifice, pride, our city. Fall River has traditionally been in the forefront of honoring our nation's soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen. Vietnam veterans took the initiative to secure rights to an 80% size replica of the Healing Wall for Veterans Bicentennial Park. The names of over 58,000 fallen heroes will be engraved on the 360 foot long replica wall. 100% of the money raised benefits the building of our Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Fall River. Help build our wall, which is scheduled to open in 2020. The meaning, the spirit, and the value of the wall is everyone's. Be part of this exceptional once in a lifetime project. To make a donation, please visit VietnamMemorialWall.org or connect with us at Facebook.com. Welcome back. And the kick, the free kick that is after the foul that came right before the timeout, is sent away and sent away once again as going back and forth here. Still scoreless though, final 11 minutes of the match. Evan Masood with you on Fred TV. Panacho sends it out. Oh, the official almost got in the way. Good feed though up ahead to Pereira. And that's going to be a corner kick for the Whalers. And it looks like it'll be Busha who will boot it away from the corner. Bounces, nobody home on the far side. Back toward the box. Hilltopper's not able to clear it. That one lofted. And it's sent out on the side and it'll force a throw in for the Whalers. And it'll be Miss A doing the honors. Dias clears it out to Lockhart. Sends it down the field. Oh, how about this? Cleared away, and it'll be a corner kick. Miss Dorado with a great opportunity, and she got outrun. So Durfee with yet another corner kick. This one higher and in the air. It's and a whistle, a foul, and it'll be a free kick for the Whalers. That's a tough foul on Dias. I mean, you saw them both come in our direction and both players were really leaning on each other. I mean, you could say there was contact both ways there. That's a tough foul to call. Dias and Pacheco were really fighting for that ball. 
Chance for Panacho, and it's spoiled. Out of play it goes. Corner kick for New Bedford. Hilltoppers defense got to stay uh, alert here. They're giving the Whalers some chances here late in the ball game. Busha from the corner. And it's good. Panacho off the chest and into the back of the net with 6.45 to play. Jeffy Coach is questioning whether that was clean contact or whether the arms hit it. One nothing Whalers. Passed up ahead to Lockhart, pressure coming, and almost a collision there with Lockhart and Miss Dorado. Off the head of Karen, now lofting it in the air. Long unable to play it. Lopes will lose it, it'll go out of play. That'll give New Bedford a corner kick. Sure, it looked like Lopes was the last one to kick that ball. Clock is stopped, final five minutes to play here at Mac Aldridge Field. Wow, that went off the head as well. It goes out of play. Another corner kick. Bouncer still loose in front. Hilltopper's able to clear it. And it goes out of play. Dias. Stop. Stop. Push it ahead. Good feed. Oh, it gets too far ahead. Roderick comes out to make the play. Back toward Dias. It's a big hop on her. Another good pass, but Durfee can't get there. That's going to roll out of play. Wow, a collision there. Two Hilltoppers going down. As uh, Lockhart and Miss Dorado got tangled up.
Matos just into the game. Fighting for it, it gets kicked away. That's kicked out of play. It's just going to give New Bedford a throw in on the far side. And this time, Pacheco called on the foul as she and Dias continue to go rubbing arms. Long trying to settle it, cannot. Hilltoppers running out of time here. Dias with the pass ahead, but to the wrong side. It's gonna go out of play. And it's gonna be a corner kick for Durfee. Say it's probably Durfee's last opportunity here. <laughs> Kicked away by Roderick, who's had a tremendous game in goal. Busha. All the way down to the box. And the goal line before it goes out of play. She was the last to touch it, so it is a goal kick for the Hilltoppers. She kicked it out. Set up here. That wasn't the best goal kick from Silva today. A diving save from Silva. And the whistle sounds, and that's the game. An utterly frustrating afternoon for the Hilltoppers. Chance after chance after chance, break after break after break, and they couldn't get it to the back of the net past Roderick. And a corner kick with less than 10 minutes to go seals the deal for New Bedford. That's a tough way to lose. Hilltoppers pick up their 10th loss of the season. It's New Bedford's second win, and they split the season series one win apiece. Well, thanks for tuning in here on Fred TV for girls soccer. We will have more for you later this week on Channel 9. Be sure to Check out our Facebook page, Fred TV Sports, for all the latest sports news as well as our, our basically our archive of all of our games as we post everything there to that site. For now, I'm Evan Massoud saying so long from Durfee High School.